Hello there, good morning, and welcome to my little corner of the internet. What you can see me doing at the moment is adding some distress ink colour to, um, I'll be doing two pieces of Claire Fontaine's paint on mixed media paper. And I'm using distress inks to add colour because I like a coloured background to work on. I've worked that much out. I'm okay white working on white, but there's something about working on a coloured background that is I find very pleasurable. So here I used um, peacock feathers and faded jeans and this is rusty hinge so I'm adding a bit of rusty hinge here just to add a bit of um, a bit more grunginess to it and this is chip sapphire which I used to darken around the edges because again I like a dark edge on paper so pop that to one side. Next one I'm using, I'm going to use greens and browns here. So this is um, Bundled Sage, I think it was. Yeah, I'm sure it's Bundled, yeah, Bundled Sage, which is a, a, a really pleasant green, grey, grey-green colour. And I'm not being careful about how I apply it because it's not really that important because it's just the background and I quite like this kind of imperfect um, application of colour because it will it will go with my imperfect drawing because I'm human and I can't I I'm pretty accurate with how I draw or not okay I added to the peel um, to the bundled sage I've added peeled paint I think it is and this is Vintage Photo, which adds some brown. And then I decide that that's not brown enough. So I think this is, oh, which one is it? Walnut Stain. So again, I'm not being very careful about how I add the darkness. And I decided to add Walnut Stain to the blue one as well, just to darken the edge of the paper up that little bit more. And that's them done. And I chose the green one to draw on and I'm using a, um, a brown, a dark brown uh, gel pen. It's one of the Arte Arteza, Arteza gel pens from their vintage set. And I hope the vintage ones never run out. They never stop producing them because these are fantastic um, colours. I've got the equivalent in um, the Zebra Sarasas. They're a finer nib, and um, these are 0.7, the Sarasas are 0.5, um, which doesn't give a 0.7 millimetre line. It's more equivalent, I suppose, to a 0.5, and the Sarasas are 0.5, which are more equivalent to about a 0.35, I think. But I chose to use the Arteza because I wanted the thicker line to begin with, so I can always use the others to go back in and add um, finer detail if I wish. It's really lovely to draw with. The ink flows smoothly, the balls are smooth and I know from using these in the past that the ink once dry is waterproof so I can add colour to this which makes me very happy again. And of course I've got now got a lovely range of um, the Sakura Moonlight, Jelly Roll Moonlight pens which have beautiful earthy tones, a lot of them. So they're going to work fantastically to add embellishments and details to this after I've added any watercolour that I wish to because the jelly rolls aren't waterproof when dry. The souffles and I think the souffles are, the glaze definitely is, but not the ordinary jelly rolls sadly. I think the metallics may be, um, I'm not entirely sure, I'd have to test that one out. But I've created a little frame here and I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to put in the middle of that frame. I've left it blank for now. Um, I could put a monogram in there. I could draw a picture of something like, ooh, I don't know, a mushroom or a flower or a bird or whatever. Or I could write a quote in there in teeny tiny letters in a way that will create a pattern on their own. That sounds quite interesting, actually. That really does. So I could use some of the skills I learned in the typographic portrait course I followed last year to do that. 
but it will be on a teeny tiny scale. And I can write teeny tiny if I've got a teeny tiny fine point pen. So it is possible. Um, I could also print a quote out to fit that, but that seems like I'd end up sticking a layer on and trying to colour a different kind of paper to tone in or not tone in. Or, so I think I might just go with that one. Yeah, I've got to remember that though. So I'm doing my typical um, entangled kind of drawings and patterns here and really just enjoying it. I've got no preconception of what patterns I'm using. I haven't even got my um, my visual dictionary, my little notebook full of um, motifs and patterns and other stuff to draw on. I To draw on. That's awful. It's almost a pun. Um, to take inspiration from would be a better way of saying it. I draw on it from time to time when I come up with new things. And um, I'm just seeing how things go. It, I work very intuitively a lot of the time. You may see me pause occasionally. And sometimes those pauses are to stop and look and think, what do I do next? Where am I going to start working next? And sometimes they're to give my mouse a nudge because the screensavers come on. Or um, I actually had to start a new podcast because the first one ran out and didn't automatically play on to the next one, which is a bit of a shame. Um, because that's why I didn't talk over this while I was recording it. Um, I wanted to listen to something this morning and a podcast was much needed. And oddly, it was... Um, Oh. oh, it's one by Jim Clemente and Laura Richards and Lisa Zambetti. Real crime profile, I think it is. Um, and you've got profilers, behavioural analysts talking about crimes and not so much the gory. And what I like about them, particularly as the seasons go on, is they focus and make a point of making sure that the victims are remembered rather than the perpetrators of the crimes which is how it should be um, I'm not going to get into that one but um, I decided here that I needed some contrast so um, I started by adding sort of like um, a pattern of lines in that middle section of these these orby things but I really didn't like it it didn't it didn't work as I wanted it to, so I decided to fill the middle in. Now here I'm making sort of like petal shapes, but with little round balls in the middle. And I'm doing my best to count how many lines I've got, because I've used six lines for each one, so that in the middle, I've got space for those little balls right in the middle, because that's where they belong. And you can see here that I'm beginning to over you know, sort of like put them behind and above one another. Obviously, I start with the upper layers and then draw the lower ones underneath, but make sure they go through because that adds some depth and interest almost instantly. And I'm also taking time to go back and add a thicker line on the left and the right and the left and the bottom of motifs generally there are times when I don't but generally bearing in, and as if there is a light source from the upper right so the left and the bottom are where I would get shadow sort of it changes in places but you know so I, I'm bearing that in mind um, not always but mostly And this was really lovely because it's it's always really, I find it an intriguing thing to do, to see how these layers build up and how, I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. Oh, perhaps not. Yeah, no, yeah. <coughs> Gosh, yes, there we are, I sneezed. Um, nothing to worry about, just oh, changing the season, I think, it's on the way. Um, which I'll talk about because my sparkly brain's gone onto it. This morning, 
there is a hint of sunshine and it is deliciously cool. I'm actually feeling quite cold and shivery here and I feel so alive when the weather is like this and I'm going to make the most of it and pop out for a while after I've uploaded this and had breakfast and everything else. It's about half past nine here in the morning so um, I started working on this about eight o'clock for drawing. Um, so yeah, so it was really interesting doing that upper bit with those sort of petal shapes or, or whatever they are and how they, they sort of like intertwined and um, layered one under the other. Um, they look almost like flames actually. Then I added some more um, motifs. You can see I'm um, thickening that line there to lift that central little panel up. And uh, I've added some sort of um, foliagey type stuff, and then I can't, I can barely go a drawing without adding some kind of arch or partial arch in my drawings and some um, geometric, more geometric patterns because that, that's what I do. I like, I actually like the mix of more architectural and, um, yeah, I will call it architectural features and the more organic, uh, it just pleases me in many ways. And there's another little arch going in there. Oh, and to help things settle in, a few more of those little tear-shaped foliagey things. I think in the Zentangle world, that pattern is called flux. It's just foliage stuff, really, it's froth. And it does look a bit frothy. So another layer of arches. And then I put, doing a zigzag. I come back and I turn the zigzags into A's, kind of. I'm going to double up the cross beam and then I'm adding shadow, thickening the lines to add shadow, shadow underneath the lines and suddenly the A's become a pattern of like a thread with these over the top of it. Magic. Well, sort of. Yet yeah, more, another arch going in. And this one will have a pattern in it. And I know this is going to be a, a Zentangly one based on a, a grid. Um, it's border. Um, I'm not entirely sure this particular pattern has a name, but it's one where the pattern almost looks like angry owls staring at you. Just their beak, you know, starts there or between their eyes and their eyes just staring at you. And then to that arch, I'm adding um, another layer, sort of. There's um, a couple of spirals and a little block in between them, and then. Um, I add lines to add um, some contrast there to it. And then I'm adding these weird things. Flowers? Uh, perhaps not. Weird seed pods? Probably. Botanical? Yep. Abstract? Most definitely. Imaginative? Mm, yep. Yeah. It's a common motif I like to use though. It almost looks like a fried egg to begin with as well, possibly, but it's not. And with this one, instead of ordinary lines, I'm adding circles or little seeds that connect the lines or, you know, on the lines. So that's going to make an interesting place for me to add colours and embellishments as well. Um, I've got a lot more to do. So, spoiler alert, I don't finish the drawing in this video. Uh, I need breakfast and I'm going to get breakfast while everything is uploading because that makes sense doesn't it so um decided to add some more of that there because my, my art does tend to grow in a very organic kind of matter in, in, a, in a way where I add something I go back I add something else and then I decide I want to add something more there and if I remember rightly I Oh yeah, I'm going here, I'm doing something here, because I want something that will 
be connected or grow off that arch or grow down from the arch and will mimic that shape but, but, but will be more organic so it breaks up that very geometric style. So it's sort of like you'd get in ruins of um, buildings where you get all kinds of plants can grow, you know, moss and things that soften the edges or grow from it. So, or perhaps deliberately planted there if it's in the garden, I suppose. But it's quite nice because it mimics the shape, but it's not regular and, and so on, it's more organic. And then I decided that up here um, to carry on round the upper edge of the, the drawing, I'm going to add some leaves. These, this kind of leaf is one of my favourite kinds. It's like a fern, but I don't always put the, the topmost leaf, the one that points out. I leave it like this because you get a cute little heart at the top. So it's almost like hearts are, you know, stacked behind the, the middle spine, which I find quite cute. And I'm putting central spine in each of the little leaflets with a little dot on the end. So I move away, I'm taking a moment to have a look at what I'm going to do. And then I decide, oh, right, yeah, let's add some more of these here. Because that will carry that sort of like, um, it's, it's an arch again, but in a different way. It's an organisation of these, these weird motifs, flowery, seedy thingies. But again, it's an arch that echoes the arches that are already there. And I hadn't really realised that before, how much I do draw in arches, even with organic things. And even starting from something as geometric as that, that central square motif. Another leaf here, and this one will take up quite a bit of space, actually, of the design. That's quite nice because that difference in scale also adds interest, I think. I'm making sure that I darken the edges just to add. It helps to lift them and give them that little hint that they're not flat, that they are, there's some substance to them. Which is always nice. I'm already eager to add colour to this, but I know I need to finish the drawing first because I'll forget what colours I've used otherwise. And it's nice to do it all in one go or to set a palette up just for this. It will take me quite a while to add colour because it's quite a complex drawing. Which which of my drawings aren't? Oh, even, even the colouring book pages that I do, pages for colouring books, the illustrations, the, the the arts, the, the drawings, the designs. Um, I draw them simpler than these because I'm requested to um, to make make it accessible for every you know for more colorists than just those who are extreme detail oriented, tiny tiny space kinds of people. Um, and there are plenty of you out there and I appreciate you very greatly because I'm exactly the same. But I, it's bearing in mind that not everybody's like that. And trying to find balance between things, which I think I may have done. But um, my personal art, I can be as detailed as I like. Of this area here, I decided to add. Th this is, these are becoming some of my favourite motifs to add, to fill a, fill a space in. Even though they're close together, they have a lighter area feel. Um, and that's it. And I'm going to say thank you for joining me today. Um, I've decided that this is where it finishes for today. I hope you come back to see how this continues. I am aware I have some other projects on the go that I haven't finished um, showing you and videoing yet, but no doubt I will. So until I see you again, please take care, please take time to be creative and look after yourselves. Bye bye for now. Bye.